<laughs> I think that it's the it's the best way to ensure that people know those are dirty, messy condoms, and they shouldn't be playing and going and going around. And even people who work in the waste industry don't actually scratch them. And they know that they should get rid of it in a particular way. So label that. Bag. Label your condom. Label your condom bag. Have a condom bag. Okay. So that's male condoms. But the biggest issue, Namtika, is that you know females, women don't actually know how to yeah. how, to, how where do they fit into yes. all of this, and how can women actually protect yeah. themselves? So it's a it's a very big conversation, especially and also in South Africa. bottoms. Yeah. So bottom yes. men who are actually receiving. Yeah. Penetrative sex, so they're actually the ones who are being penetrated by the penis. So they're actually receiving through the anus. Can I actually put on a female condom to yes. protect myself? Yes, you mom? can. So this is the inner condom, which is sometimes referred to as the female condom. So this is the condom that goes either inside the vagina or in some occasions inside the anus. Um, depending on the type of sex that you're having, obviously. And so the female condom is looks much larger and bigger than the male condom. And just also in terms of the placement of the date, it's also different. So the packaging looks different. So for the female condom, you need to keep condoms that are within the expiry date range or make sure that whenever you're about to have sex using this condom, um, you make sure that you keep one that is not expired. So the one fact about the female condom is that you can have it on for up to eight hours. So you don't have to put it on eight hours before you use it, but you can have it on for up to eight hours. So you can actually put it on, go on your date, have fun, make out, and when you're ready to have sex, it's still gonna be okay for you to use it to have sex. So then the female condom also has an indication of where you open it. So there's usually, wherever you see this one arrow, there's usually a section that indicates and shows you how to open it and where to open it. So you'll find that slight, very small slit of a tear and then you open your female condom. And once you do, so you take it out and you will note that for this specific one, so there's this one and then there's one with the cupid we, which, in which this is not necessarily an inner ring but it's a sponge. Um, and then there's different kinds of this specific one where there's different kinds of rings But what's most important is for you to know that whatever is inside So whether it's the cupid sponge or it's the ring it goes inside the vagina or the anus and The outer ring remains outside Right, so basically this entire part is covered on the inside or is held by the inside of your vagina So how you use your condom? Sorry, we don't have vaginas fold the inner ring into an eight and if you are this is specifically for people who have vaginas who use tampons or menstrual cups the position that you use so you either squat or you lift one of your legs up or you're in a position where your vaginal opening is open and you insert the inner ring so you fold it into an eight and then you insert it inside the vagina so once it is inside there's gonna be a bit hanging outside because it's quite big. You can use your middle finger, which will probably be convenient, <laughs> or you can use your index finger, but the middle finger is usually the longest, so you can use your middle finger to push it inside, right? So remember that if you want more pleasure and maybe you're not necessarily well lubricated, you can use lubricant on your male and your female condom. So you insert your female condom and you make sure that the outer ring remains outside and that throughout your sexual experience, it doesn't in any way go inside. So you make sure that you keep the inner ring outside and for the first point or at the first point of penetration, you guide the penis or you guide whatever you're penetrating inside and make sure that the outer ring still remains outside. Right? And so the business happens, things get exciting and you, it's all good and well and then the ejaculation will come. So obviously the condom is inside to catch the ejaculation in such a case. So then you twist it while it is inside. It doesn't have to be twisted intensely. And also, whether it's through lubricant or your bodily fluids, you will be lubricated. So when you are done, you sort of twist it once or twice, and then you gently pull it out. As with the male condom, you're trying to avoid spillage, and you are trying to avoid it messing up someone else's. So you can also use a tissue here, then you just cover it up because it's already twisted. No need to try and tie knots. You just make sure that it's twisted and sealed and then you cover it in a tissue and as per the male condom you do not flush it 
and you dispose it far away where people will not be able to see it and in an appropriate place like the bin or as Lance said earlier you can label your female condom bins. What other avenues can I take to protect myself? If I mean if, if condoms are really not I'll go to the club and I am and I don't have access to a condom or I am a sex worker and the, my client refuses to use a condom mm -hmm. or they will actually pay me more if I actually don't use a condom. Yeah. I mean, how do I then protect myself? And how do I ensure that that sexual transaction or that interaction with whoever it might be, I might be like, ah, get drunk, not be yeah. in, my, in the you right state of mind. Like, you know, you think you might be at a risk. Yes. You don't necessarily have condoms with you. You want to yeah. go out and have a job. So like how do I protect options? myself? What options do I So the interesting thing, the nice thing that I'm reading up a lot on and I'm learning a lot about yes. is PrEP. Okay. And I like the sound PrEP because it sounds like it's, it's preparation. Yeah. You know, you are... Yeah. It is actually... Poor Yes. Mm. So PrEP is basically an ARV that protects you mm. from getting infected yes. with HIV. Yeah. So in full, it is called the pre-exposure prophylaxis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So which basically just means um, it's some form of a protection for you before or if you think you may be exposed to HIV. Yes. So it is taken by people who are HIV negative. So I'm okay. co-infected and I'm not HIV. And you take it as a pill. Yes. So you so take it as a pill. Yes. Yeah. So you're on the pill that is protecting you from getting infected with the HIV. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's an introduced and your mind So it's an intense conversations around the prep and where it is being rolled out and how it is going to be rolled yeah. out. But I think. And as by and and for prep, so we have many GPs, we have many doctors, yeah. these doctors, so maybe not prescribed yet, but it is very difficult to get it to have access to it. It's very difficult it right is now, now to yeah, get especially to in it. South Africa because in South Africa, yeah, we, there's still a lot of work that is being done, and yes. they're still researching where they can they can make mm -hmm. it available. So yeah. Omanho is a research site. So in yes. places where there's research studies that are conducted, a number of sex worker sites yes. because we do know that. That sex workers need to have the access yes. to the prep, and um, many of sex with men because a lot of, of men, a lot absolutely. of men have sex yeah. with men. Um, men don't always yeah. um, say that they are gay, mm -hmm. but they still have sex with men. Or a lot of gay sex happen in very public spaces, mm -hmm. and so that creates that increases the risk. So yeah. we're just gonna have sex in the bathroom, for example. Yeah. I'm just gonna pick up sex somewhere in yeah. a club. I mean, because of the family structure mm -hmm. and, the, and how we, our families understand sex, yes. will never will sometimes not be inclusive mm -hmm. of gay sex. So men can't actually, unlike, for example, heterosexual sex, yes, that's always welcomed into the space yeah. where the boyfriend can come to the house. And there are particular spaces that heterosexual couples can find to be able to have sex. Gay men, gay men are, are mm -hmm. usually don't have Absolutely. that kind of. Um, yeah, that kind of um, be able to and negotiate sex in that yeah. woman and lesbian, lesbian women. women. So it's and about trying to trying to understand that condom use is not always um, a, 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 a an option. option for many people. It's not always an option because remember we talk a lot about choice, which is great. We mind the plus about choice and we speak about options, mm -hmm. but Tabanya band to only have specific options. Yeah, there's for example we're talking about how prep is not accessible now. There's people mm -hmm. who can access it at the moment, mm -hmm. but it's not made available. It's for not everyone. made available. There's not anyone because if you don't have enough money to go yes. to a GP or to go see someone, then you won't necessarily have access yes. to it. Yeah. And so your con condoms would probably be your primary point yes. or your primary option. And for some people, there actually isn't any choice at all. Yeah. You know, this is all you have. You and cannot access what... anything. Yes. And so that's not really choice. It's yeah. basically, this is all I So have. your risk of being, of contracting HIV yeah. is so much more because you, ha you, yeah, you inevitably don't have any other Absolutely. form of protection. Yeah. So, and then you have PEP, which is the post-exposure post prophylaxis. So PEP is basically something that would be like a flip coin of PrEP. Of PrEP, So PrEP yes. is, I think I might be exposed. Yes. I'm at a higher risk based on, we have a range of different reasons. Mm. Adolescent girls and young women need access to PrEP. 
for a lot of reasons. Mm. And some of these reasons are bigger, like yes. these reasons that have to do with systematic yeah. issues. Yeah. But actually, the problem is not the fact that you're having sex and you're taking in prep. The problem yeah. is the fact that sometimes you might get raped yeah. because, you know. And PEP is available in the public s- yes. s- s- system it is available. for people for, for people who are raped. Yes. So if you report, so, and that's why it's so important for you to, to, to want to, to, or to access health services yes. post rape because it's yeah. important for you to have access to the PEP. Yes. And so track. it's also important you know, for the spaces at which we are reporting cases and in places at which we're actually receiving these services for them to be supportive and know how to deal with rape with victims. victims for yeah. example. Because yeah. what about needs? And, but in the yeah. I report a case for a lot of reasons. Sometimes they don't know that they were raped. Yes. And sometimes they do know that they were raped, but how we ask them questions yes. as healthcare providers, yes. as people who are a healthcare provider, yeah. it's in a way that makes them feel like Mm. No man, I equal it with Tetai. Mm. And so it is important for us to seek the information and to seek help. But yes. it's also important for the for us to also create as a space that will allow us yeah. to seek that help. So yes. in PEP um, is post exposure. Yeah. Yes. Like so this is post exposure prophylaxis. Yes. So this is after you've had sex, yes. after you've been exposed yes. to being at risk of contracting um, HIV. So maybe you sure. just had sex. And you um, and you need to take and you, you, a lot of needle prick injuries as well. So if yes, you yes, have yes, a yes. needle prick injury, yes, many health providers will actually take prep, uh, pep, not prep, sorry, pep, pep because which is post. post exposure. Yeah. Okay, pre exposure is before. And with the with the prep, what's important to know is that they need to test your kidney, the kidney and liver functioning, mm-hmm. um, and you, the, you need to go for an HIV test yeah. before you can actually yes, for initiate. Yeah. Um, for, for prep, for both. To, yes, 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 for prep as and well. for pep as well. Okay, um, so yeah. so it's important, and it's important to, and it's obviously important to know your status because of yes. that will also um, and understand how do we manage being HIV positive, and so mm. it comes to this point of what's antiretroviral treatment and how does it actually work? Yeah. What does it do? What does it do? Okay. Okay. So. so for antiretroviral treatments, which is yeah. the ARV mm-hmm. treatment, so when you go to the clinic, you get tested, and they and they and what they test is usually your viral load and your CD4 count. If you test positive, and your CD4 count, but no, when you go to generally, mm-hmm. it's the CD4 count that will assess whether you are HIV positive or not, because your 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 that is your blood T count, and the lower your blood T count, the the if it's low at a particular point. Then that's where they become where it becomes evidence so that just you are a quick recap. So yes. now we like all learning together. Yes. So yeah. that bleed blood T. Did you say blood T count? So T count. Yes. yes. So that's the white that's blood cell count. When we're defining what HIV is and we're talking about yes. T cells. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Now the hyper T cells. So how many the, of those cells yes. are okay? Yeah. So you you're counting your 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 T your T helper cells. Yeah. Okay. So what inevitably happens is that when you test, you test if you test positive. What will happen is that you need to enter into the system of care. Mm-hmm. So into yes. ex- now you are you an manage? HIV yeah. so um, client mm-hmm. in the system. Mm-hmm. So how does that work? Okay, so this this then brings us to the conversation around care. So you spoke yes. about HIV prevention and yes. that every now and then. So mm. before you use prep, before you use pep, you get tested. Yes. So what happens in not mm. only the context of prep and pep, so just what happens if you find yourself in a position where you get tested and you test positive? Positive, yeah. So now can we just have a discussion around K, yes. ARVs? Yeah. People yeah. don't even know what ARVs are, for yeah, and what they are and why they're important. And do you know what? Do you know what, Namtika? The biggest thing is is that many people will think that when they test positive, that it's the end of the world, but and it really isn't. Test. Yeah. And yeah. and it's important that that it's pe- that we are aware that actually you know technology has advanced so much that we can actually live a full life and 